Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 23 of my Learn to Program series. In a previous part, part 21, I created all kinds of things for making a text editor, but I didn't cover how to make the actual text editor part. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to open files as well as how to save files inside of a text widget, and then you'll be able to add all those features covered in part 21 to make a fully functioning text editor. All of the code is available in the description as well as a transcript of this video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here I am in PyCharm. Let's go and import our different modules we're going to use. Let's just get everything from TK Enter, and also we're going to need to import TK Enter file dialog, which is going to allow us to both open as well as save files. And I'm going to create a proper class for this. I'm going to call it Text Editor. It's going to be very simple and it's going to provide you with the ability to go in and add a whole bunch of functionality. Now the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a static method that is going to allow us to quit our application. So quit app is what I'm going to call it and event is going to be set for none. And quite simply all this is going to do when called is just call for the quit function to run. All right, so pretty simple stuff. Next thing I'm going to do is provide a function that's going to allow us to open files. And this is going to be also passed event. And we're going to set that to none because these are going to be called from menu items whenever they're clicked on. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go text file. And I'm going to open a dialog that is going to allow users to find the file they want to open. And then it's going to be displayed inside of a text widget. So to do that, you just go TK enter and file dialog and then ask open file name is the name of that and parent is going to be set for root that's going to tie it to our root or our main window and then you're going to set your initial directory now of course this is going to be completely different than what I have as an initial directory unless you have Derek Banis as a directory on your computer which everybody should so there we go and you're gonna to have to put the C in there if you're on Windows of course and all that stuff but I trust you know that. And PyCharm Projects is going to be the directory that's going to open up specifically. And then I want to check that I actually had a file selected. So if a file was selected by the user, then I'm going to call self and I'm going to get my text widget and I'm going to delete whatever is inside of there. And to do that, you go 1.0 and end. And that's how you specifically delete a text widget. Then I want to come in and open a file and put the text from that file into my text widget. And I'm going to use with here, just like we've used previously. And we tell it the specific file that we want to go and pull information from. And I'm going to say as file. And then inside of here, we're going to go self text area and we're going to call insert to insert the information from the file. You're going to go 1.0 again and then we're going to say file and we're going to say read and that's going to read that information and put it inside of my text widget. Then you're going to have to come in and update the text widget. If you don't do this it's not going to update after it's done and we'll say update idle tasks and there we are and oh, make sure you spell it right. And there we go. And that's all we need to do to be able to open a text file. There's the whole entire function right there on one screen. How we're going to be able to open up a dialog that's going to allow them to select a file, check if the file exists, delete anything that's inside of there, insert the information from the file, and then update the text widget. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's come in and I'll show you how to save a file whenever we make changes to it. So, once again, we're going to have self inside of here and event, and I'm going to set that to none for default. I'll just move this up here. Of course, pause the video if you don't have time to go typing everything in. Then what I'm going to do is open a save dialog box on the screen. So we're going to go file dialog once again. And here we're going to say ask save as file. Yes, these are very long winded. And the mode we're going to use here is a write mode. So we're going to write to the file. I'm going to say if file not equal to none. Then I want to get all of the text that is currently in the text widget, delete the new line that's at the end of it, and then save it. So I'm going to go data is equal to and self and text 
area and call git on this and I'm going to go 1.0 once again and then I'm going to call end and then after that this is going to actually delete the last character or the new line that is in there. Okay, so that's what that guy does. And then I just need to write the text and close the file. So we'll just go file write and data is what we're writing and then we will say file close. And that's how easy it is to save a file. So that's how we open a file and this is how we save a file. All right. So now what we need to do is just initialize our text editor. So we're going to go define underscore underscore init and this is going to be passed a root and that's going to clear up a whole bunch of errors that we're showing right there and root of course is just going to be our main window. I'm going to start off by going text to write and just give this nothing here. And I'm writing this out of my head, so I'm not 100% certain I'm actually going to use that. So then we're going to go in and go root title and give this a flashy title like text editor. And then I'm going to define the width and the height for the main window. So geometry. And I'm going to have the width be set for 600 and the height be set to 550. Maybe that'll look good. Maybe it won't. We'll find out going to then come in and define the frame that is going to hold all of my widgets or pretty much the only widget which which is going to be the text widget and I'm just going to have the width and the height be exactly the same 550 for that and what is a text editor without a scroll bar so if you want to create a scroll bar we're just going to go scroll bar and call scroll bar and you pass the frame inside of that then I need to connect my scroll bar to my text area. So I'm going to say self and text area is going to be equal to text and frame. And I'm just going to have the width also be 600 and the height be equal to 550. I didn't constrain it so that these can't be resized. So, you know, they can be resized. Then I'm going to call Y scroll command. And this is going to connect the scroll bar to the text area for us and equal to scroll bar set. And then after we have that there you can say Y scroll command scroll bar set. And then I'll just add some padding. So I'm going to say uh, 10 to on the X Y axis and 10 on to 10 on both the X and the Y axis. OK, so that's the padding. Then I'm going to call scroll bar and config and command is going to be equal to self text area and y view and this guy is going to be called whenever the scroll bar is going to be moved it's going to handle scrolling the text for us and the scroll bar is going to be on the right side of the screen and i just need to go and put it there and how we're going to put it there is go scroll bar pack and then we're going to say side is equal to right and then we're going to fill the scroll bar in the y direction I'll make sure we have right be right there and then the fill is going to be in the y direction now i need to set up how we're going to put the text area widget inside of here so i'm going to say self and text area and call pack on that and i'm going to say that i want it to be set to the left side of the frame that we have surrounding everything i want it to fill all of the available space and then I also want it to be able to expand. And then after I have that all set up, I can go frame and pack. And then let's create our menu as well. You saw this in a previous part of the tutorial. We want to create the menu bar that's going to go across the top of the screen, you know, like we have menu bars up here. So here I'm just going to pass in root inside of there. I'm then going to create my file menu equal to menu to the menu which we just created here and then I do not want it to tear off the screen at the top actually in the next part of the tutorial I'm going to create a little toolbar and I'll show you how to use tear off with that and now I just want to add the items to the menu that are basically going to show whenever a file is clicked on so whenever you click on file it's going to display open as well as save and then you saw the menu items or the functions already above that are going to be called whenever those are clicked on. So I'm going to go add command and we'll set the label for the first one to be open. And then the function that's going to be called whenever that open is clicked on is going to be open file. And you saw how that works.
Likewise, we're going to do the same sort of thing for save. So let's just come down here, paste that in there, and we'll change this to save, and we'll change this to save file. And there's save file. Now those are both set up. And just for the heck of it, let's come in here once again and add a separator that's going to go between those two guys as well as a quit. And you already saw the function for the quit as well. File menu, and then we'll call add command once again. And then this one is going to have the label for quit. And then the command that is going to be called whenever this is clicked on is going to be self and quit app. Just make that self. All right, so we're moving along here. We're almost done. Wanted to do a real quick tutorial this time since the last one was so huge. Now I need to add the pull down menu to our menu bar. To do that, you just go to the menu and then add cascade. And the label for this guy is going to be file, of course. And then menu is going to be tied to the file menu that we just defined above. And then we need to display the menu bar. And to do that, we go config. And then we say menu is going to be equal to the menu. All right, so we have everything all set up. Come down here, see what's going on. All right, there's the whole entire class. There's all that. So I'm going to come down here, which is technically going to take us out of the class area. And I'm going to say root is equal to create our TK object. And then all we need to do is go and create our text editor. And to do that, we go text editor and pass root inside of it. And then after that, we call main loop, which is going to run as long as quit isn't run. And we can circle up through here to make sure there aren't any major errors. And that's perfectly fine. And all of this all looks good. So let's run it and let's see if it works or if I made a little mistake. And here we go. Here is our text editor and I can click inside of the text editor. And let's come in here first off and we'll go up to file and I'll say open. And you're going to see that the little dialog box is going to open right here. It's just slow because I'm recording this video at the same time. And there you can see are all of the different files we have. And I can click on sample text. This is sample text and here is more. And I can come inside of here and I can say and here is some more sample text. And then I can come up here and go file and save it. And it's going to open up here where it says save as. And I'm going to be able to come down here and just click on sample text like whatever and click on save. If I want to replace it, say yes. And then if I would come in and go file open once again, it's going to show me the exact same thing. There it is, and there it is. So there you go, guys. You can go into part 21 and change the fonts and play around with all the other different things. Just wanted to cover this because you guys asked for it. And just like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.